Welcome to Tenderfly Nature Center. Welcome um, to Tenderfly Nature Center because it's a beautiful place where you can go kayaking in pond in one pond and there's in every way there's a new story hung on to the trees. Um, they, and it's a beautiful place to bring younger siblings and please come to the Flint Nature Center and try to come every single week. Hi everyone, my name is April and I'm going to be showing you around Ithaca, New York. Ithaca is a small college town on the bank of the Cayuga Lake, one of New York's Finger Lakes. Ithaca is known for its cozy downtown area, known as the Commons. It has lots of fun shops, places to walk around, and plenty of festivals around the year. My favorites include the Apple Harvest Festival and the Ice Festival. Make sure to try the apple cider donuts if you ever visit during apple harvest season. Many people also know Ithaca as home to several colleges, such as Ithaca College and Cornell University, which is where I went to school. There are so many neat areas and places to visit on these campuses, they're worth visiting just to experience on their own. But my favorite part of being in Ithaca is the natural areas. There are tons of parks and walking trails all over Ithaca, both inside college campuses and beyond. And you'll be sure to find lots and lots of beautiful scenery. For instance, you can visit the Cornell Botanic Gardens, which I used to walk through every week on my way to classes. They have lots of cool plants, and you can explore trails leading to towns near Ithaca. It's really gorgeous, even in the winter. It snows a lot in Ithaca, as a warning. You can also visit Stewart Park near downtown Ithaca. Here, you can walk along the banks of Cayuga Lake. Ithaca is also famous for its gorges, which you can see on the Cascadilla Trail, in Buttermilk State Park, near Ithaca Falls, and in the Fall Creek Gorge. If you're looking for a small town experience with lots of beautiful landscapes, Ithaca, New York is a perfect place to visit. Get the rainbow clock because if you're late on any flight or anywhere you're going, just use the rainbow clock and you can change it to whichever color you want. And you can and and it, and if you're going on a flight, it you there's a button with the letters and you press it and it will tell you which um what's your flight number and what is your flight called um and there's a um, button which has which has which has the word colors on it then you when you press it you'll see different color buttons and in that and the button that has green will make it green um and and it will make you on time every single time you're going somewhere so whenever you're late, just buy the rainbow clock. Ooh. Our first stop in Madrid is the Plaza Mayor. This place is located right in the center of Madrid and it is where tourists can go and enjoy some traditional dishes, drinks, desserts and anything of this sort. Next we have Gran Via. Gran Via is a big shopping street with many cafes, restaurants, theaters, hotels, and beautiful buildings. People like to say that this is the Broadway of Madrid. The Royal Palace, also known as El Palacio Real, is the official residence of the Spanish royal family in Madrid. However, it is now only used for ceremonies. This palace actually contains more than 3,000 rooms and it is the largest one in Europe. Up next, we have El Retiro Park. This park is definitely very unique and I highly suggest that you go if you ever visit Madrid. On we have El Palacio de Cristal, also known as the Palace Crystal in English. 
So this palace is actually located inside of Retiro Park and you can go to enjoy a super nice view surrounded by some greenery and some clear windows. Up next we have the Real Madrid Field, also known as the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. So this stadium is home to the Real Madrid soccer team and it can actually see over 81,000 fans.